This, my friends, is the 2023 Honda Goldwing DCT, and we've got it on loan from Honda for the next few months. But look, this isn't my first rodeo when it comes to the Goldwing. We borrowed one a couple of years back, and I've got to say, I absolutely loved it. In fact, so much so that I think I'd say it's the best large capacity tourer that I think I've ever ridden. So here we go with my 10 favorite things about it. Now look, the engine is the standout feature of many a bike, but none more so than the Goldwing. It's got a 1.8 litre flat six, so three cylinders protruding from either side in that flat layout, and effectively you're looking at like three BMW Boxer Twins joined together. The benefits of this configuration are plentiful for a big tourer like this. So firstly, it makes bags of torque, which is exactly what you want from a big bike that you might have loaded up with a passenger and luggage. And also, as you can see, the weight of this engine is slung very low indeed. So despite the fact that it's 367 kilograms, I believe, full wet weight, it actually doesn't feel all that intimidating. Then you've got the fact that it's perfectly balanced, so it's super smooth, and of course, if you're doing big miles, then you want minimal vibrations through the bars, the pegs, the seat. But fourthly, and most importantly, I think it sounds rather a lot like a Porsche. Now tie that silky smooth engine in with their silky smooth DCT gearbox and you've got a recipe for luxurious touring comfort. And basically DCT is a little bit like an automatic box, but arguably better because it uses two sets of gears and two clutches, hence the DCT name, to seamlessly move up and down the box on your behalf. Now you can switch to a manual mode using this button on the right hand switch gear and that allows you to use these little paddles on the left switch gear to move up and down the box. There's no shifter lever on the left peg and that can be a little bit more rewarding when it comes to faster, more sporty riding, but also a little bit more manageable during low speed maneuvers. But for the most part, I just leave it in the automatic mode because it's just so smooth that you barely notice the shifts. And for me, that's right at home on a big tourer like this. And I think also if you take a passenger on the back, they're going to thank you as well. Now you might think the lack of clutch and controlling everything on the throttle is going to make it a bit of a handful for doing super low speed stuff, but they have thought of that. So you do have a walking mode that goes both backwards and forwards. Now other bikes that I've tried that have had a reverse feature use the starter motor but on this DCT bike it just uses the engine and feathers the clutch on your behalf so you fire it up, hit the walking mode button and then you use those shift paddles that I was talking about from the DCT to either go forward or well, I'm on a hill, so it's rolling backwards anyway, but backwards as well. And it's super controlled. And again, like I say, if you've got a passenger and you've got luggage, then that's definitely gonna be a nice little safety feature. Now, the other common obstacle that you might encounter with a big tourer like this is hill starts, but thankfully they've thought of that as well because hill start assist is standard across all gold wings. So again, just fire it up, put it in drive mode, and then a good squeeze of the front brake lever means you can just let go of it in the DCT version and as soon as you give it a bit of throttle, it moves off. <laughs> now on the flip side, there might be times when you're on a hill and you don't want the bike to move. And for that reason, they fitted a handbrake because of course with DCT, you can't actually leave it in gear. No fancy electronics here. It's just a simple mechanical handbrake. Give it a pull and it ratchets on. And there's actually a second caliper on the rear disc, which is used to, you know, hold it on the handbrake. And then you can just give it a pull, let go and the handbrake's off. You know, another thing that I really do like about this bike as well is the riding position. And that's for a couple of reasons. Firstly, the seat is like low enough to be confidence inspiring, but not too low. It's 745 mil. So yeah, you can easily get both feet down. And of course that's reassuring when you've got a fairly heavy bike, but also it doesn't feel like your bum scraping along the floor when you're actually riding it. The other thing is personally, I much prefer having mid position controls on a cruising touring bike like this. And of course you don't really have a great deal of choice because of the engine configuration and it really does protrude at the sides there and it means you can't really get forward controls that easily. I think there are probably some aftermarket accessories that do that kind of thing, but naturally with the foot controls, they sort of sit in behind them. But like I say, for my personal taste, this is the optimal setup and also the bars fit very naturally into my hands. I'm about five foot nine or 175 centimeters just to give you some idea of how you might look on the bike. The other part of touring comfort as well as the ergonomics is of course wind protection. And this thing is phenomenal. Now it does have an accessory kit I think it's called the full accessory kit for the standard gold wing and that does include a taller windscreen but just look at this the power windscreen goes right up 
and I think that is the biggest windscreen I've ever ridden a bike with and it sits pretty much in line with the top of my head. Thing is, it's not just the rider that gets to enjoy the absolute comfort of this beautiful machine because the passenger situation is also very good. Now, arguably the Tour edition of this bike is a little bit better because you've got that big top box with a bigger backrest, but this is part of that accessory kit that I was just talking about. You get a massive seat and also these mini floorboards. And I don't think there are many bikes with a lot more space than this. Now, generally I would say I'm not always the biggest fan of keyless systems because you have to find somewhere to keep the key anyway and you end up getting it out to do stuff like the steering lock or the filler cap but this particular system is excellent just from being around the bike you can open the central locking side cases and also stuff like this little compartment ties into it as well and you can use that to open the filler cap once that's open you've got a steering lock on the ignition switch there as well and it gives you a nice little beep to let you know that it's locked there's even a little stash here which you can use for your phone but also you know, somewhere handy to pop the keys so you're not rummaging around in your pockets. Now also in that little stash, you've got a USB socket so you can keep your phone charged up, but it also hooks up to the dash to bring you either Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. For me, that's a massive boost to get all your favorite navigation and messaging and media apps right there on the dash, gives it a big USP over some of the other tourers. And it's something I'd be seriously thinking about if I was buying a bike in this genre. Just generally as well, I'd say it's a really nice dash to use. You can use that screen where the car Play comes up in the sort of normal Honda menus to manage all your riding modes and rider aids and settings and things like that. But it's also flanked by a pair of analog clocks and I think that's a nice blend. You know, the modern functionality of a big TFT display with some of the character and ease of use of those slightly more old school analog clocks. And number 10, I think I'd say, would be the styling, but also the presence that the size gives it. I think I prefer this slightly more modern aesthetic to something like a big Americanized Tourer. And especially in this base Goldline DCT model with this slightly stealthy looking gray paint job. The little pops of red on the cylinder heads as well. I think it just looks like a very futuristic and interesting looking bike. It certainly gets people over to talk to you when you park it up. Also, the LED lighting all round looks really striking. You've got that big DRL at the front and then the indicators integrated into the mirrors and it really does make it stand out on the road. So that's just a few of the reasons why I think this might be one of the best, if not the best, tourer on the market. And we'll be doing plenty of miles on it over the next couple of months to tell you exactly what it feels like on the road. Lots to get stuck into. We haven't even talked about the link braking system today and the big six pot brakes. The double wishbone suspension at the front there, which is also super interesting. In. And so if you do want to know more of my thoughts about how this bike feels on the road, then do hit subscribe if you're not already. I'd love to know what you think of it down in the comments. So do let me know. Many thanks for watching today and we'll see you in the next one.